Oh. But I'm like, this can't be real. What are the, what are the charges to Alex Ferguson's walking down Fifth Avenue? Like... Scott. Sanderson! It's four. Brilliant ball in. Clinical finish. At the time, you got signed as a very young, young, young kid in football. There wasn't, there wasn't a female league. Which no, sounds no ridiculous to me because I'm so used to you. Um, Rachel, Yankee, like certain names that we've all known about, but because I wasn't totally involved, I actually didn't realise that coming through that, wanting to do professional football was actually something you couldn't have seen as a child, seeing other people that looked like you doing it. No, and that's what's funny about it because I used to think it was quite normal to, to be that way. And then as I've got older, I realised actually I was kind of very like, I felt like a bit of an alien at times though, because from five years old, I knew I wanted to be a professional footballer. And it wasn't even really, I was the only girl on the team that played, on an all-boys team. And then I just knew I just wanted to be a professional footballer and it wasn't even a professional league. And then, you know, I turned pro. When we talk about first, I was like the youngest ever person to turn pro in England when I was 14, scored on my debut, you know, but it felt normal to me. And then when I kind of retell my story when I go to schools in America and, you know, talk about stuff and they're like, the kids' faces are like, <gasps> team like but I don't want them to feel like they're failing in life because they didn't know what they wanted to do when they were five and they didn't know what they wanted to do when they were 14 because they look because some of the kids that I train of my academy yeah. they're like young they're the same age or older and they think like well we're not going to make it because we're we're past the age but that's not what I'm trying to that's not the message I'm trying to say it's like if you want to be a doctor a nurse whatever you want to do just always put your mind to it because anything is possible and I'm just a, a regular girl from South East London that had a dream and Fortunately, I have the most amazing mum and dad that supported that. But you know what's also interesting is uh, when I think about me at 14, I don't think I was fully formed to appreciate some of the things I appreciate when I'm 19, 20, 21, whatever. Do you think when you look back, Leanne, and you were that young, do you really think you got to enjoy it or in the moment? Because when you're wearing an Arsenal shirt, like adults, everyone dreams about wearing a shirt with a name at the back. And you as a kid have got your own. Well, the thing is, it was like, my dad's an Arsenal fan, so I, he, and I'm a Manchester United fan. No, no. So it's one of those things where, like I said, it just felt normal. Like, yeah. it didn't feel strange to, to do that. And it's because I always visualised it. I always broke down my goals and aspirations. And my dad always taught me that from a really young age about visualisation. And I used to think my dad was crazy. I'm like, what's my dad talking about? Law of attraction. And, you know, if you put things out there, it can become a reality. And I used to think, nah, this ain't going to work. And then actually, I started to visualise from, from the age of like seven. And I thought, actually... My dad's got a point here because you know when you're a kid you think I just want to play football and you just said oh darling just have a try and stuff like that so honestly Max everything that I've done everything that I do I always had the goal to do it and I always dreamed to do it and I always worked hard for it because nothing's been handed to me on the plate and that's what's interesting because I've almost had to reinvent my career with what happened with me in England and stuff like that and that's that's also been that was quite traumatizing but at the same time everything happens for a reason so it's like being that young and, and playing and having your name on the back of your shirt you don't really think about it because it just felt normal to me i think when things are equal we're never going to make these points that's when we know equalities work firstly you're a woman secondly you're a woman of color third you're a gay woman those are all different prejudices racism all sorts of shit that you have to deal with from society i think i've learned to be not as naive i think that's one thing i think take care of me a little bit more which is not something that comes natural to me because i'm a giver and i love to help people so i've learned to be a little bit more selfish if that's even possible for someone like me because i really get a lot of joy out of helping people but i've learned you know what if you can't help yourself you can't help others and i think 2020 was a hard year for everybody but i think it taught me a lot and I had an injury like four years ago. And I think I learned a lot about myself and others during that time because there were people that I thought would be there for me. And I know a lot of people felt that during COVID and lockdown that some people, they felt disappointed by that and checked in on them. Mm -hmm. I almost had that like four years ago when I got injured. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like reassessed my life. But I do think that I've had moments where people haven't chosen me because they they like me, but they don't trust having someone like me on TV. This was about 10 years ago because I have an opinion. Whereas if you notice in the last few years, people want people with an opinion now, which is how it should have always been. Yeah. Because you don't want to, every celebrity, every footballer after a game starts to sound the same. 
it gets boring. And I understand what they're saying because they have a media person, they have a press person telling them what to say. Everyone says, oh, why do everyone sound the same? Now, I have a hard time with that when I go into a change room after the game and there's a board up saying, these are our bullet points for what we're going to say to the press. It's like, professional footballer, I'm not going to I'm not going to say anything. We've already, we've already been media trained. Trust us, you know. So I always found that quite hard when I'd go on t I I went on talk sport when I was playing for England and everything was so controlled that it might as well, I might as well have not been on there. Whereas now I go on talk sport regularly yeah. and I absolutely love it. Well, the guys are so controlled because I can tell you some of the football the, the guys that I've interviewed in my time um the thing I learned about footballers is they're scared to show their personality, the guys at least. The girls, not so much, which I love, especially like you've shown me that. But um, also, I noticed that after 11 a.m., they're bored out of their brains. It's like they don't know what to do with themselves. They're watching MTV, they want listen to music. Yeah, playing Fortnite, playing Call of Duty, playing yeah. FIFA. Your social skills are so limited because you're so controlled when you're not, sorry, when you're not doing your training because you're told you have to stay in your hotel. You have to be the same people. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I personally, I mean, I don't, I get it as an athlete, you guys have to be regimented and it's a different level of looking after your body. But what about your mind? No, do you know what though, Maxie? Absolutely used to like, really, I used to find it quite hard when we'd be at World Cups and stuff. And I think on the outside, everybody, and I've absolutely, I've been to two World Cups and I feel honored that I got picked to go and play for England. Fantastic moment, especially in 2015 when I won the penalty, which made us win the bronze medal. The Farrah, Farrah Williams put it away. But I remember when Mark Sampson came in at the beginning and it was fantastic because he just allowed us to wear our own clothes. Sounds silly, but we didn't have to walk around with a button up polo shirt and a tracksuit 24 hours a day. Those small things, when you're away for two months, make a massive difference. Like allowing us to see our families. In 2007 in China, uh, my mum and dad came over to China and literally did not see them did not see them and you talk about the mind like you need that time away and i'm very much like my teammates know that when i have a day off i love my teammates but i don't want to be around them i want to go away i want to go and do something whether it be on my own because i can be better in myself if i go and i do things that people are like only you would find that like i'll find a spa and it's like well no you can too like it's not like you're restricted so talking about the mind how important it is you know i've been to 76 countries and i feel blessed to have been able to go to 76 countries but maybe only half of them maybe even more than half i haven't really seen them how does it feel to be the first sometimes like you know when they when if i typed in your name there'll be like different headlines that come up things like oh the first open gay woman da, 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 da. i mean it's a really big deal especially in football you're smiling but let's be real how many men in the premiership probably are gay but don't speak out about it because of the pressure of what society will say but i'm wondering like does it ever get to the point where you think, gosh, like I'm, I, I'm glad I spoke out and said how I, who I am, but at the same time, I don't want to be like the face of, hey, I'm the gay mixed race woman that plays internationally and is a professional footballer. Don't define me by that. I'm Leanne Sanderson. As you, I, I mean, how do you feel about it? I'm smiling because I actually had this conversation when I was at Juventus with the press officer and I said, look, I'm not doing any more interviews about being gay. They might as well copy and paste all the ones that they've done. I've done a lot in my career. I'm happy that I can help people, but I'm just, I want to be known as like, not Leanne the gay footballer, Leanne the footballer that happens to be gay. Now I understand it's a very big deal. I love my LGBTQ plus work I do. It's, it's something I hold very close to my heart. The amount of messages I get every day from kids, parents, emails, letters, it's amazing that I can be a role model to people. But I think it does, it doesn't get tiring. It just gets, a little bit like I've done a lot in my career I've won everywhere I've gone I've won a Champions League every single time and that isn't through luck it's through hard work and commitment and dedication but I sometimes think especially when I go to other countries um that's the first thing they want to talk about and I'm like but actually why don't we talk about all the accolades that I've done as well I'm wondering because you've really gone hard on your Instagram over the last I would say COVID time because you've had more time I guess do you enjoy it and how do you treat social media yeah, I actually, I have a love-hate relationship with it now, but I think the more success I've had, the more trolls you get. And I think that's just the reality of life right now, as I said before. In the sense that I prefer Instagram because I do get more people, I would say, on Twitter, it's more negative when it comes to the stuff I do. And on Instagram, it's more positive. Um, you do get the odd 
mm, here and there, but I do think for some reason, like I have people on Twitter um, tweeting my employers and they don't just tweet me, they'll at mention BBC or Sky and they'll say what you've got her on there for, we're gonna mute her, <laughs> like it's just weird, but it's funny because they'll be messaging, they'll be tweeting at like seven o'clock in the morning and I'm like, well, I'm clearly on your mind early in the morning, so I must be doing something right. <laughs> When I see you on my timeline, you bring joy. To, like I, I love it because you're not like you're talking to different people. You're always saluting and bigging up other people, putting people on as guests or shouting other people out. But also, you're not living in this world of like Photoshop and Facetune. What people don't realise, I use a filter, don't we? Or I love a filter sometimes. You know, when I'm on, I use a Snapchat filter and stuff like that. But the thing is, like. It doesn't mean I use a filter because I don't love me. And I think the problem is with a lot of these young kids now, it, it breaks my heart because they want to be a Kardashian. They want to be this, they want to be that. And I like the Kardashians, absolutely good luck to them. But a lot of it is down to work, cosmetic surgery. And that's the problem, Photoshop, cosmetic surgery. And these kids are looking, I mean, you could do three hundred and six. You could do squats three hundred and sixty-five days a year, but you're not going to get a butt like Kim Kardashian without getting some work done. So it's like the kids are all going, "I'm going to squat, I'm going to do push-ups," and I'm like, "Listen, it ain't, ain't going to work." Have the hip ratios gone out like that? To be fair, I'm just like, what type of what is going on in the world? But it is, it is like. I, I agree with you about we all have fun with filters, but like sometimes I just think, God, if I was thirteen or twelve growing up now. I hope I have good parents around me because this shit yeah. would be too much for me to deal with. So, be honest, okay? I feel happiest when... I'm on a beach in the sun. <laughs> yeah. In the sun, anywhere in the sun, actually. It doesn't need to be on a beach, anywhere in the sun. Yeah, no, that sounds amazing. One tune that always puts you in the right mood to train, to work out, to go for a jog, anything. Playlist is uh, Summer, okay, Drake, Summer 16. Oh my God, look at you, Drake fan. <laughs> a movie that you could watch over and over again? Ah, uh, easy, Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman or The Bodyguard. Oh my God, you are such a romantic. Yeah. Look at you. I am a romantic. <laughs> yeah, like those are the <laughs> ultimate romantic films. <laughs> you made me laugh, I love it. Okay, um, one motto that you live by. Always be true to who you are. That's the tattoo that I have here. Nice. On my arm, my right arm, because it's my, to be fair, it's my favorite Jesse J song, Who You Are. Um, and I love Jesse J. And then um, I love the lyrics because I always be true to who I am. I love that you're a proper little music fan, aren't you? I love music. You know, it's like my favorite, like other than I love concerts. That's one thing I really miss. I've been to see Beyonce like 12 times. It's amazing. All over the world, Drake, I love concerts, music, oh, I love it. Are you, are you cushy, top seat, or are you like literally in there with the real fans, the beehive, like screaming? No. I can, I, I get nice tickets, but then I always end up going like where I want to go. So I don't like being in behind a glass window. I'm like, I want to hear the music. And funnily enough, when I was at the Kanye concert in Toronto, um, I went down from the VIP and I went down to the stage because it was it was in the edge. You know, when he had that floating stage, yeah, and Kim Kardashian was down there as well. So <laughs> if it's all right for Kim, it's all right for me. And that was like down there, and I love it. I love being amongst it. And do you know what else I like about you? You're you're like a fan as well. Like you literally still get yeah. gassed about meeting people. It's the cutest thing ever. Like I'll be like, although your obsession with Alex Ferguson and Wayne Rooney really needs to chill because that is too much. <laughs> <laughs> like you meet so many amazing yeah you meet so many amazing people and this is why i know you're a football fan through and through those two oh my god it's like beyonce and jay-z the, the the happiness and the fangirl face they i mean have you when you meet people like that you love like wayne rooney and sir alex don't you ever think god they say never meet your heroes they might be assholes like is have you always been lucky no, they don't ever meet your heroes they do say that don't they but to be honest like wayne rooney became a really good friend of mine during my injury because he reached out to me um and that's how and he gets me tickets for the games honestly it was fantastic like because i got this message because he knew i'm a man united fan and he just said i've heard you're injured it was the most surreal experience like on my whatsapp i was thinking this can't be real and I'm like, and I was literally not feeling good because I was injured in a leg brace and like literally invited me and my family to the game. It was unreal. 
hallucinating. It's unreal. My medication, what's going on? No, but to be fair, my mum and my best friend could not believe it because we were outside the changing room, like in the tunnel, yeah. and it was just amazing. Like, honestly, it was amazing. But Sir Alex Ferguson, yeah. probably, I've met Ronaldo, I've met Messi, but Sir Alex Ferguson was the best person for me. Like, oh. I was just blown away. And he had, we actually spoke for quite a while, which was great. And I'm, I'm not one of those people that can't speak. So it's like, I held my own. But Sir Alex Ferguson is Manchester United. You know, players come and go, but... This guy is on a different level. And I actually bumped into him, believe it or not, in New York on Fifth Avenue about eight months ago. And I was like, no way. You no, so but I didn't take a picture of him. I spoke to him. Oh. But I'm like, this can't be real. What are the, what are the charges? So Alex Ferguson's walking down Fifth Avenue, like, called all my Man United friends. I'm like, you're not going to believe this. So Alex Ferguson is outside Puma on Fifth Avenue. I can't believe it. 